Hi, this is Chris Kinane with ARC Advisory Group. Joining me today is Jim Frazier, Vice President, Infrastructure and Smart Cities at ARC Advisory Group. Jim? Thanks, Chris. It's great to be here with you again. Can you tell us about digital transformation and its impact on smart cities? Uh, as you know, ARC specializes in digital transformation. The three pillars of digital transformation uh, do also apply to smart cities. The first, of course, is a technology refresh or technology updating. And we all know about the dramatic technology improvements that are happening in the world today from uh, IoT and digital twins, uh, machine learning and artificial intelligence. But that's not the only pillar. Those technologies also drive the uh, redoing of your business processes. Um, you'd be remiss if you left out the third pillar of that equation, which really is the cultural adaptation of your workforce. That um, often that might even be the biggest challenge to uh, uh, overcome. Can you drill down into one foundational piece that all smart cities need to implement? By far, some of the, some of the obstacles are, are siloing of technologies and of people. There's many different departments in public agencies from cities, counties, states, highway authorities. So overall, a smart city platform strategy is, is really what's required. So that includes all of the uh, sensors out in the field, edge devices, the backhaul infrastructure, as well as all the data analytics and digital twins and single pane of glass at the head end. It's important to remember that uh, public agencies have a, a range of typically nine verticals are generally accepted uh, as part of being of the smart city domain. That's energy infrastructure, that's transportation, water and wastewater, waste management, uh, public services, public services of police, fire, um, so you need to wrap all of those into one unified interoperable backhaul network called a smart city platform. What obstacles are there to deployment? One of the largest is interoperability. We have a range of legacy systems out there across those nine applications in the smart city domain, and many of them don't work with each other. So interoperability really needs to um, be achieved. There are some initiatives in that area in terms of standards that are driving that forward. Uh, the U.S. Department of Transportation, in fact, has um, a range of interoperable standards for everything, for all, almost every device that fits on a highway. Um, well, lastly, the uh, user needs. One of the biggest obstacles is that there is a plethora of stakeholder communities that all need to be corralled. You need to find their needs, achieve consensus, and refine them into measurable requirements that can become an RFI or an RFP. How do smart city advocates engage with the ARC smart cities team? Well, as you know, Chris, the, the smart cities effort here at ARC is, is relatively new. It started about five years ago, uh, and I joined the organization a little over a year ago. We have uh, a range of outreach activities from blog posts to a weekly podcast to bi-weekly, twice a month, IEEE smart city webinars. We're uh, coming up this month with, with a, a weekly email newsletter. So that, those are all great ways for advocates and people interested in the domain to, to learn more by interacting with ARC. And of course, all of that requires quite a bit of content. So if we have uh, clients or end users out there that would like to contribute and write a guest blog post, or join us to be an interviewee on a podcast, or even host an IEEE Smart Cities webinar and present uh, uh, in, that, in that platform, we'd love to have them uh, in our domain. So thank you very much. Well, thank you for joining me and for sharing your insights today. Okay. My guest today was Jim Frazier, Vice President, Infrastructure and Smart Cities at ARC Advisory Group. Thank you for watching.